Hey, welcome back. I know it's been a while since I've put anything up. Uh, this is going to be a bloody altar uh, to go with my uh, lava board. And uh, basically, this piece is just a cutout that goes with an island on my board uh, that I'll use just to measure stuff out. I'm going to have uh, a hard board base. Uh, I'm going to have some foam here. Uh, and then I'm using a bunch of scraps from some uh, other projects. Uh, these are Hirsch Art blocks. Uh, I am going to have to make a few more, uh, particularly some of these uh, skulls, uh, some pieces to make some stairs out of, uh, a few pillars. Uh, I just didn't have enough scrap left of the right kind of blocks to do that. Um, but again, hardboard is actually scrap left over from that lava board, as is the foam. So uh, first let me make some more blocks and then I'll be back. Alright, so the first step is I uh, just drew out copy my template onto this hard board uh, that's going to be my base and uh, I'm going to just take that over to my bandsaw and cut it out. Okay so here I'm doing a test fit. This is the lava area and this is the bridge I'm thinking about having come across. So what I'm doing is I, I'm going to cut out a piece here so that the bridge will sit more flat. Uh, and I'll, alternately I have a smaller bridge that would also work right there. Um, uh, so. I think what I'm going to do is cut this out instead of having the bridges up on the edge. I mean, I could easily leave it on the edge too, um, but I think I'd rather I think I'd rather cut it out. All right, just a quick shot here. Um, so now I will just sand down those edges so they're a little rounded, and uh, then I'll start working on the foam. All right, so here is the next step. I'm going to uh, cut out a piece of foam. This foam here just represents the island. This is going to be the land and this is going to be where the altar is going to be. Uh, so I'm going to cut that out uh, and then I'll start working on uh, putting all the pieces together. Okay so the next step is actually to cut out for your stairs. Uh, so what I did is these are glued in already. I just took my handy dandy exacto knife. I really like this Stanley one because it has one a, a lock and two you know it's adjustable and replaceable uh, the big things with this is make sure that you go in small cuts and very sharp and then uh, basically what I did is I took it over to the actual uh, place I was going to put it uh, sat it down measured out I drew out my lines where I wanted the, uh, the stairs to start I uh, cut inside of that uh, and then I, you know, uh, shaved outwards till it got a tight fit. Uh, and uh, basically, I cut all the way down, cut across as deep as I could, took out a little chunk, and then took out a halfway point, and then took out the rest. Um, just make sure that your knife is very sharp, uh, otherwise, it'll start tearing. As soon as it starts tearing, you might as well just. Uh, break off your piece and go to the next little bit. Uh, my next step is going to be to measure out for the next stairs and uh, I will come back after I get those done. Alright, a little better light, but uh, okay, so now what I've done is I've just laid out my next two stairs um, and then what I'm going to do is I've measured out how far they are. I can't cut and hold this at the same time, uh, so I'll be back when I'm done cutting this. Alright, I'm back. Um, I went real slow, that's the main thing, because you can always cut more out, but it's hard to put it back. It's a very tight fit in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll glue, glue, see, I mean, I'm going to have to push it in, uh, and that's okay. Uh, once I get these glued in uh, and dry, uh, then I'll come back for the next step. Okay, I know no good way to do this next step, so what I did is I just set my depth on my this to the exact depth of a brick and cut a grid and now I'm just going in and flipping it out. Um, anything that gets too deep I'll fill in with a little bit of sand um, and if it's too shallow I can always shave a little more. Uh, like last time I cut inside the lines because I can always go out and I can't go in. Uh, so this is going to be a long and tedious part but uh, I will be back when it's done. I'm going to try and hold this at the same time but basically this they just very hard, but they pop out in little squares. Um, 
and that's the, the plan. So, um, like I said, very hard to do this. Uh, this is terrible on a set of chisels. I'll have to sharpen these puppies back up here later, but uh, in general, I'm just wedging out each little piece uh, a block at a time. Uh, like I said, very tedious, and I will be back, oh, probably tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> okay, so that actually went pretty quick. You can see all the little uh, divots here where the little squares popped out. Um, this was where I started out digging before I uh, thought of doing the grid. Uh, so let me smooth this out, um, then I will start laying uh, the brickwork. All right, and there's a dry fit, and then what I'll do is, uh, down in these little cracks here, uh, that'll just get some sand uh, along with the rest of the, the model. Uh, and then what I'll do next is let me glue these in, uh, then next we'll be texturing the sides. I just wanted to get a little bit of weight in here before I did that. Uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so the next part is complete. Uh, the floor is glued in and I've gone through and I just did some uh, texturing to the side. This will match the cliffs going into the lava rivers. Um, if you look at my lava board tutorial, I'll show you how to do this. But basically, you just take the back side of a lock blade um, and rub it the back side here up at this point up at this point up here and you just rub it uh, perpendicularly along it just back and forth and it, it will rib it up oh, I'm sorry it'll rib it up just like that um, so that's it for this step um, after this we'll come uh, gluing it to the base uh, and then I will start putting together uh, the altar and then we will uh, get to sanding and painting. Okay, so I sort of lost the bubble on this and uh, I don't remember what the last update was, but uh, so far I've, uh, I've glued this down to the uh, base, I've glued in the floor, I've glued in the rings, and then I also uh, glued together some blocks and uh, some uh, columns just to to kind of uh, be decorative. Uh, next step is to start laying sand, and I'll put these down first, uh, just because I thought I might want to put some sand across uh, some of the flooring, uh, and just uh, so everything would be set up. Uh, so the sand is pretty easy. Um, generally, all you do is I'm uh, looking for a, a brush. Uh, Take regular PVA glue and you know spread it around. In this case, I'm doing it all the way out to the edges, and then you'll lay your sand on top of it, and you just leave some extra space. Uh, in other words, don't glue all the way to or sand all the way to the edge of the glue, because uh, then you'll end up with a sort of a flat line of of sand. This is a different brand of sand they had here. It's really damp this morning, so I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but this is just multi-purpose sand, and it's actually got some rocks and stuff in it, and I just did exactly what I said not to do. Um, okay. um, so, let me you know, lay the glue down here. And that's probably more glue than I need, but uh, well, now you'll be able to see what happens when you you don't do it right. Um, you know, go ahead the glue, the glue right up into the edges here, uh, and that keeps uh, you know anything that looks like a seam you want to avoid. So if you get a little bit of sand up on you know your stairs or on your wall, that's okay. It's just is what it is and makes it look like sand's blowing up on it. And the condensation this morning out here has made my sand a little damp. So I'm probably going to stop here and see how this ends up looking. Um, 
And anybody who knows me knows I'm cheap, so these are just blisters from from you know uh, models. Uh, that I like to use for this. Okay, and what I'll do is I'm just going to go around the rest of the base here and then I'll dump off the excess sand and later I'll do up here on the top when the sand's not quite as condensed or quite as damp. I've never had that happen before so anyway um, I'll get this done and I will come back later. Okay, so here it is with all the uh, sand glued on. Uh, not a lot to tell here, but uh, next step will just be to uh, paint it. I just picked up some uh, Rust-Oleum paint uh, and primer in one, uh, and uh, I'll just use that on here, paint it over, uh, and then I will go through the next few steps. All right, so here's where we're at. I've done uh, primed the uh, entire thing black and then uh, I did a dry brush of a dark gray so what I'm gonna do is just you know it's regular old craft paint you know 33 cent at the Hobby Lobby kind of craft paint so a dark gray then I'll do a gray and then I'll do a light gray so this is I did a heavier dark gray sort of real heavy maybe damp brush I'm not sure what you call it but on the brick areas and a lighter dry brush on the sand area then I'll come back and I'll do another coat with the medium gray and then I'll go light gray and then I'll start working on some of the colors. So here it is after the second coat, the medium gray. Try and bring it down a little bit here. Um, uh, one thing to do is to look at it from multiple angles because uh, you'll see areas you missed. Uh, just do the different highlights. So uh, One more step with the light gray and then I'll move on. Okay, so here it is after the next uh, level of dry brush. Uh, I did a light white. Um, primarily just did it on the edges of things, so just on the leading edges. Uh, and then I started, I don't know how it's going to look, but I just got a wild hair and decided to put a little dark red, like red, black, and white spiral down in the bottom of the well. We'll see how that looks under uh, the water, uh, which if it all works out well, we'll have a red tinge. All right, so next step is going to be uh, to make the little handle for uh, this switch over here. Um, Alright, so what I've done now is I uh, went ahead and did some glowing eyes on the skulls. And the way I did that was a little bit of white, then a darker red, uh, then within the darker red some orange, then some yellow, and then a little dot of white down at the bottom. And then I used quick water, uh, added uh, some blood letter glaze and some ball red uh, to make it red, and uh, poured it in to the fountain and a little bit over here by my painted handle. And uh, then uh, all I did was do a quick gray dry brush on a couple of skeleton parts and uh, put them in and then poured a little bit more on top just so you get some coverage. Uh, unfortunately, the spiral down at the very bottom uh, is completely covered and you can't see that, uh, but it was worth a shot. Um, but that right there, once it uh, finishes drying, uh, will be uh, my bloody altar. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Okay, so here's the final product sitting on the board where it's going to sit and uh, basically added in some eyes the way you do that. Just put some white, then uh, you know a dark red, then a lighter red, and two yellow in the middle with the white just at the very inside. Uh, after all the bubbles and everything set, you could see that spiral just a little bit. Uh, that's plenty enough. Uh, and it works in the area and there you have it a fairly easy way to do any kind of altar uh, one thing to note though is the water that I had piled up over here as it dried uh, kind of spread out and dissipated so 
Uh, failed attempt, I'll have to work on that a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, there you have it.